Join me tonight as I learn how to roll the perfect pasta. First long fusilli. Yeah. I branch out to find fantastic fruits. It's not just a cherry. This is the cherry. And I cook for my Italian family for the first time ever. You know, I don't know why I'm nervous. You know, I've cooked for so many people. This is my Italian escape. It's impossible for me to return to my home country without coming to Campania, the beautiful region where I was born and where my family still call home. Campania is in the south of Italy. Today, I'm going to a town called Gragnano, 30 kilometers south of Naples city. And I'm here for a good reason. As a chef, this is hard for me to admit, but I've never actually cooked for my Italian family before. My auntie Rita lives just down the road, so I've decided to treat her to a meal. That's her, and who's that good-looking little boy? For the meal, I need to pick up some authentic Italian ingredients, and I've come to just the right place. If you ask any Italian, a Bagragnano, the first thing that they will say to you is pasta, because Gragnano is the home of pasta. Gragnano has been producing pasta since the Romans were here. These days, the factories in this little town export about 15% of all Italy's pasta. I'm keen to find out how Gragnano's food has become so famous. And the man who can tell me really knows his spaghetti from his linguine. Pasta is in Giuseppe Di Martino's blood. My family has been living here for 100 years and uh, uh, we've been involved in pasta for now three generations, like most of the people from Gragnano. Gragnano was once home to over 150 pasta factories. Each one dried their precious pasta in the streets using the hot southern Italian sunshine. Giuseppe tells me it's not just the sun that makes the town's pasta so special. It's another one of Mother Nature's gifts. This is the Gragnano water. Taste it, see how nice it is. It's light got very little calcium. So it gives you a lighter pasta, not too heavy, yeah, easy and it, and to handle. Very easy to handle, and it doesn't interfere with the taste. So Gragnano's blazing sun and delicate mountain water are crucial to producing world-class pasta. But there is one final element high up in the mountains that guarantees pasta perfection. Every were around from each other direction, south, east, north, it's all mountains. So the only way for the wind to get in the town is from west. And west you so have the sea. the sea, and it brings moisture. So the pasta can be dried gradually, naturally, and perfectly. This is the reason why Gragnano is unique. The water, the wind, the perfect position. This town was designed by God to make pasta. Gragnano's unique story has inspired me to cook, and I can't wait to get my hands on this legendary pasta for my Auntie Rita's dish. Buying food in Italy usually means being spoiled for choice, and here we take our pasta very seriously. This is pasta heaven. Absolutely beautiful. In Italy, there are over 650 shapes of pasta. It's a shame that nowadays they're not widely available. For example, if you take this one, it's like a pot, right? So I, I, can, I can see this one kind of cooking very slowly in the oven with a nice ragu in the middle, with a nice little bit of beef stock in there, and it's just gonna taste amazing. This one here, which is actually called fidanzati, Fidanzati means lovers. And let me explain you why, because can you see? It's like uh, two tubes of pasta 
Kando making love to each other. That's, that's what it looks like. And what I'm gonna do with this is now to prepare a nice tomato sauce with chili, garlic, salmon, and I know for a fact that together it's gonna work brilliant. I want to get my pasta dish just right for my Auntie Rita. So I'm heading up into Gragnano's beautiful mountains to perfect my recipe. And here is my dish. Pasta with salmon in arrabbiata sauce. If you want to translate arrabbiata into English, it means upset, when somebody gets really angry. And the reason is, is because in the arrabbiata sauce you have chili, and chili makes the upset thing. The salmon with the arrabbiata, it works perfectly. I'm kicking off my sauce with a splash of olive oil and finely sliced onions. And this is exactly what you want to hear, the sizzling onion into the oil. Now for that angry chili. Okay, not too much because then it's gonna be really arrabbiata and really upset. Now for the pasta, it's very important to cook the pasta al dente. Any Italian will never eat pasta that is too soggy, okay? And what you have to do is to cook the pasta one minute less than is instructed on the cooking time that is on a packet. Don't tell me off, but salted water makes the pasta taste so much better. A real arrabbiata sauce must have this. Chopped tomatoes from a tin. Don't use fresh tomatoes, because trust me, it's just not Italian. Now, once you put the tomato into the sauce, lower the heat, slowly, slowly. The tomato is getting nice and thick, ready to coat my pasta. For the salmon, what I got here is a nice fillet of salmon. You can get it anywhere. Do make sure that there is no skin on the bottom of the salmon, okay? If you chop the salmon up into small chunks, it will cook much quicker. And you don't have to use salmon. Chicken is just as good. Now, the diced salmon goes straight into the tomato sauce. Italians wouldn't normally cook salmon with arrabbiata sauce. But I think my family need to enjoy the genome magic in this dish. So what I'm doing now is to gently poach the salmon pieces, releasing the flavor of the salmon into the sauce. And now for the finishing touches. Flat leaf parsley, coarsely chopped. I can't resist more salt, and for even more flavor, a glug of extra virgin olive oil. Gently stir everything together. And this is actually ready. People often make the mistake that they drain the pasta, they put it on a plate, and then they put the sauce on top. That's not the way to do it. You need to allow the sauce to coat the pasta beautifully. And that's how you get a perfect plate of pasta. So you pick your pasta up, give it a good shake, straight into the tomato sauce. Then, very gently, you mix everything together. The only thing I've got to do now, serve it on a nice warm serving plate. Now, just sprinkle a little bit of parsley on the top. That's it, a little parsley goes on top. Let me tell you, this salmon is very happy to meet my favorite pasta shape. My dish is perfect, but I'm not ready to present it to my Auntie Rita yet. I'm heading back into the center of Gragnano, the home of pasta. It's my first visit here, and so far, I love it. For any Italian, uh, you know, I'll guarantee you, just like me, as soon as you wake up in the morning, you're already thinking, what kind of pasta am I gonna have today? What kind of sauce? What kind of shape? It's so much part of our life that we're thinking about pasta all the time. Before I cook Gragnano's world-famous pasta for my Auntie Rita, I want to see how it's made. 
So I've come to a place where I've heard that some delightful ladies still finish their pasta in a traditional way. Showing me around this factory is Alberto Zamponi. Buongiorno. Buongiorno. Tutto bene? Sì, sì. Have you ever seen? I never before? seen this before, no. What kind of shape is this one? A long fusilli, handmade fusilli. A long handmade fusilli? Yeah. yeah, well, I think I should keep this lady's company. Okay. I feel nervous. Oh, no problem. Stay relaxed. Okay. Okay, like this, and then just roll it. I like this. Veloce, però. Se no, è quando si fa. Eh, she wants me to go quick. <laughs> I just tried it for the first time. I'm not gonna go quick. Ma just che pensate, quando fate la pasta, che pensate? Ai mariti, ai fidanzati. Ai mariti, qua mariti. No? I've just Alla asked, uh, uh, when you do pasta, what do you think? Your husband, your boyfriend, he said, my woman, we don't think about men, we just make pasta. <laughs> See, if I was working all right. here, all right. I will do probably one kilo per day. <laughs> I don't know. That's okay. All right, your first fusilli. My first long fusilli. Yeah. Come on. This way of shaping pasta is hundreds of years old. Apparently, the dough used to be rolled around umbrella spokes. E questo vuole imitare i capelli di una Madonna del Carmine. She said that it resembles the 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 hair of a Madonna. Not the singer, uh, uh, Jesus mom. That's the one. The hand-rolled fusilli is slightly thicker at each end compared to machine-made pasta. When cooked, the ends stay harder, meaning the pasta is less likely to break. Alberto, I'm wondering why there is only women do this pasta? Where, where are the men here? Because the women are more gentle to, 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 to move fast, to take pasta, and then because they, they, has, they haven't the soup. They don't have hair? No. <laughs> no, no, of course. You never met my mother, have you? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> Please, don't say so. Now I have seen the dedication of these lovely ladies, I can understand why Gragnano's pasta is so special. Eccolo qua. Right. Hola, lista. But I'm told that there is another local product that should be just as well known. Four hundred meters above sea level and facing the sleeping volcano Vesuvius is a hidden surprise. The most incredible cherries I've ever seen. I have to admit, I've never been into a cherry orchard, and the only thing that comes into my mind is, definitely, I think this is one of my favorite trees ever. I'm looking for the owner, Ciro Scala. This beautiful orchard has been the pride of his family for more than 100 years. Buongiorno. Buongiorno. Ciro. Ciro. Come Ciro. state? Tutto a posto. Tutto bene? Sì, sì, tutto bene. Fantastico. Bellissimo qua, eh? Eh, sì. Me ne fa assaggiare? Posso prenderne qualcuno? Prego, pure, pure accomodarsi. I Prego. need to try one. I need to try one. Com'è? Buona? È buona. È buona, è dolce. You know, this is, uh, is what a cherry should taste like. It's sweet, but mainly is the color. It's like a cherry that is being designed by Gianni Versace. It's not just a cherry. This is the cherry. I'm dying to know how Ciro has managed to grow fruit with such a fantastic taste. Mille anni fa, eruttando il vulcano, ha portato della rapilla e quindi le piante diventano belle, fanno il frutto buono e tutto viene come la natura crea praticamente. 
Seeing all these succulent cherries just makes me want to create something with them. Io vado, eh? Gino, può stare lì, io la tengo. I have to say, I don't have the best shoe for uh, 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 cherry picking, but hey, hey, we are in Italy, so... Uh... Io vado, eh? This is pretty hard work, but that's not a bad view from the office window. Signor Ciro, come sto andando? Un Lento. Po', un po' qualche rametto in più, però... Ah, just asking how I'm doing, and it doesn't sound very enthusiastic. He said you're picking more leaves than cherries. But I think I've got enough cherries now for a special dessert. And I have a great recipe in mind where I can use them. Ecco qua. C'ho le ciliegine. I know you will love this dish. Veramente la ringrazio. It's delicious, quick and I promise you very easy. It's cherry tiramisu. Everybody loves a tiramisu, but not everybody loves coffee. So I thought, why don't I use fresh fruits? I'm going to put a little bit of cherry liqueur, a sponge, and I know that it's going to be just fantastic. Make sure that your frying pan is hot, so the cherries go straight into the frying pan. In case you're wondering, I've taken the stones out. I'm going to add a little bit of sugar, so they get beautiful and caramelized. And then I'm going to add cherry liqueur. The cherries need to go a bit soft until the skins split a little. Very nice. I'm just gonna put them on the side here and leave them to cool down. Now, for my gorgeous tiramisu cream, which starts with caster sugar and egg yolks. And have a look what's gonna happen now. The more you whisk, and the paler the color of the egg yolk is gonna become. And you need to achieve that color because that means that the sugar is completely melted into the egg yolk. That's it, I'm happy. It's gone nice and pale. You can't have a tiramisu without mascarpone cheese, but do soften it first. For a final burst of flavor, scoop out a fresh vanilla pod. That is like, it's like finding gold. It's, the smell is unbelievable. So get your vanilla seeds straight into the mascarpone cream. Uh -huh. Mix everything together. And the last thing that we're gonna add is a little touch of cherry liqueur. I wish you could smell. That's it. Job done. Now it's time to build my tiramisu, starting with sliced sponge cake. Just gently press it down with your fingerprints. Then the luscious cherry cooking juices, followed by that glossy vanilla cream. Then we're gonna add three to four cherries. and carry on until the glass is full. And the last ingredient that I'm gonna put on top is crushed hazelnuts. There you have it, look at that, it's just buonissimo. My time in Gragnano is drawing to a close, but I've got one last very important thing to do. I've come to see my Auntie Rita, and I'm going to cook my salmon pasta dish for my Italian family. I have to admit I'm a little bit nervous because uh, uh, I know that it sounds quite strange, but I've never cooked for my family before. And, you know, whenever I come here, they always cook for me. You know, I don't know why I'm nervous. You know, I've cooked for so many people. They shouldn't make me nervous. I'll be okay. It's fine. It's fine. Already at the table 
is my auntie Vita and all my uncles and cousins. But what makes me really worry is that Italians are the toughest food critics in the world. Wish me luck. Pasta alla rabbiata con il salmone. Questa è una ricetta uh, uh, adattata. Eh, Mista, eh, ma... Mistra, sì. Napoletana e inglese. Sì, sì, sì. Eh. Aspetti, dove? So far, so good. But I need to ask the best cook here, my auntie Rita, what she thinks. Sì, è buona? Fantastico, guarda. Salute! It's wonderful, it's wonderful, it's wonderful. I love it when amazing food brings amazing people together. Buon appetito!